hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, as you know already, and I'm here to do another car review. This time I have a really different vehicle, a brand that I haven't actually had an opportunity to review before. This behind me is a 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonali Veloce plug-in hybrid all-wheel drive compact SUV. Or, yeah, I don't think it's mid-size, so I would say it's compact SUV. First, I want to thank Stellantis Canada very much for allowing me the use of this press vehicle, because if you didn't know, Alfa Romeo is one of the brands under the Stellantis umbrella, just like Chrysler, Fiat, and a whole bunch of others. So, hope you enjoy this quick review of this uh, capable plug-in vehicle. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Yeah. Super excited to be looking at this car because again, as I mentioned, Alfa Romeo is a brand that isn't that popular in North America. It certainly has a cultish type of following and people that like Alfa Romeos are very loyal customers, just like a lot of the other niche, niche brands like Maserati and Fiat and a bunch of others in those categories, Lotus, things like that, where you've got to really love the brand and feel for the European flavor and flair that these vehicles offer. And the Tonali, according to Alfa Romeo, is leading the brand's metamorphosis to electrification. So this is their first electrified product in the Tonali Veloce. This trim is the Veloce trim. They have a Sprint and a Veloce trim. Now these are made in Italy and they're developed as an Alfa Romeo first and foremost. So it's got that DNA, it's got the heritage, it's got all the design language, all that kind of stuff that you would expect from Alfa Romeo. And looking at you know the B-roll you're seeing, it certainly does does come across that way, right? Um, you know, even in a lot of JD Power surveys for owner satisfaction, this was amongst the first among premium brands and third in the industry, from a, which is something I didn't know from an Alfa Romeo perspective. So they do quite well. Now this um, is a vehicle that's a compact SUV, as you can see. It's got a nicely appointed and designed interior. It's got a nice exterior. I've actually had a few people look at this as I was driving by because it is a bit of an unusual type of design, but it definitely you can see the Italian heritage, the roots of Alfa Romeo brand in the design elements from the front, the way it's sculptured and the headlights to the rear and to the taillights and to all the treatments around here that really pop out that this is an Alfa Romeo. Even the stance of the vehicle, you know, sitting just that little bit upwards, uh, kind of like it's almost going to leap at you and having a bit more of a clearance in the wheel wells from the wheels and the wheel arches. A lot of these little things just kind of make it unique to Alfa Romeo. So just on that, closing on the design front, you know, you either love it or you don't. Um, I do love this color. This is an extra $2,000 paint job. So don't get so used to it because if you don't mind paying for it, then you'll get it. But I, it, it really pops, especially in the sun when it's clean. I just washed the car and it's got that metallic green. It's a really nice a shade of green though, very pleasant to the eyes and very calming, I guess, and soothing. But again, gives you that visibility or that vision that this thing's going to take off and it does have some oomph to it and I'll get through performance and specs coming up but just to wrap up with the design it's a really nice unique vehicle that will stand out but not overly pop to say hey I'm an elf you know I'm something completely different but definitely stays true to the heritage and the DNA of Alfa Romeo. Now from a powertrain perspective, this is a gas engine powered vehicle along with a battery pack. So again, it's a plug-in hybrid vehicle um, and it's good enough actually for most daily use cases. And that's again, one of the reasons why I look at plug-in vehicles folks is because if you can get most of your kilometers, most of your miles driving in battery only, you can see a substantial saving in fuel costs and lower your greenhouse gas emissions quite dramatically, more than you would think. Now, this particular vehicle does have an engine up front. It's a 1.3 liter turbocharged four liter. So it's a small turbocharged engine, but it's still in mating with the battery pack and the electric motor in the rear. It's a 90 kilowatt rotor on the mirror, uh, rear axle. Um, so the uh, four cylinders made it to the front axle and the electric motors made it to the rear axle to give you EO wheel drive in the modes where that will kick in. But it does produce 285 horsepower and 347 pound-feet of torque, so it can actually get you going quite well. And I'll talk about uh, you know some of the performance in when I drive this thing. But it's got an EPA electric range of 48 kilometers. 
Uh, every day this thing after charging all night does pop up and show 50 kilometers. I don't think I, I'm actually driving 50 kilometers every day on all electric because our temperatures have taken a nosedive this last week. It's been doing okay. It's been doing okay. And I'll show you the numbers at the end as far as what I was able to achieve on electric only and then how much gas I used. And just so you can see roughly what your savings could be in a similar kind of environment. A couple of other key driving dynamics um, uh, on this is it does have brake by wire technology, which is different. It has a balanced chassis, some dampening in the suspension. You can select the dampening, the e-dampening. If you put it in a performance mode, it does stiffen up the suspension. You can feel it a bit if you so it stays a little bit more kind of planted if you're going to take some turns aggressively and all that kind of stuff. And it's got these what they call the signature DNA switch which gives you dual power. So D stands for the dual power, that's dynamic performance with maximum output, both from the electric motor and from the internal combustion motor and, and stiffens that suspension. You get your natural, which is the middle kind of selection. And that's kind of where it automatically defaults to. It's power management and it goes back and forth for everyday use, balancing the engine and the e-motor without uh, compromising performance and comfort as well. And then if you go into the advanced setting, you will get uh, for pure electric operation, uh, operation, and that's where I typically will start the day after charging it all night. I'll put it into the A setting and drive it as long as I can in that setting uh, to use as much battery as possible. And it'll run the battery, as it says here, uh, for 40 kilometers. Again, your range is going to vary. So a decent powertrain system, uh, a decent um, setup for that, and especially for all day driving and a pretty comfortable environment to do it in. Now for battery and charging, this does have a 15.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. So it's a decent battery pack size to get you that 48, 45, 50 kilometer range. Charging ports on the driver's side, only a level uh, a J1772 for level one, level two charging. Plug this in with a level two charger, you can get about two and a half to three hours charge. But even if you just use a wall, uh, 120 wall socket, just your basic wall socket with the mobile charger provided, it will still charge us in about eight hours. So plenty of time overnight to plug this in, recharge it, get your 40, 50, 60 kilometers, whatever it is of range back and use that up every day and cost you very, very low. Now Tonali, as I mentioned at the top, is a compact SUV, so it's not gonna have huge amounts of cargo space. Uh, it does have a power lift, so press the button, let the hatch open up here. And I'll show you in the B-roll and some pictures here. It's got a pretty decent cargo space um, with the rear seat. Uh, with all seats in place, it has uh, what you're seeing here at this particular portion is about 23 cubic feet of space, uh, 648 liters. If you do put the second row down to get you all the seats down, then that doubles it to about 50 cubic feet, about 1,430 liters. So it's definitely a decent size. It's a little narrow, but it's got a pretty good height to it. So it's actually a little bit more space than you would think in this compact design. And they've done that quite, quite well. And there is a cubby space underneath here, but it's really just a small co compartment for your charging cord or some cables, your you know, tire safety kit, that kind of stuff. There is no spare or anything else with this vehicle. So that's all you get there. So really not much you can put in there. So, but you do have some tie down hooks, seat split with the, the middle folding downs for a pass through like for skis or something long, that kind of stuff, which is a typical uh, element that you'll see in, in European based products. Just a quick tour of the interior, as you can see. So some smaller door pockets, but enough for my water bottle. Sorry for the shattering and stuff, just trying to get some light in here. It does have all power seat options. So this does have an upgraded nice leather interior. It is very comfortable. It's very firm, but definitely bol bolsters you and keeps you in the seat. Here are the light controls, automatic lights, pedals, sport type pedals. You have your paddle shifters here for the actual transmission. It's an automatic transmission that um, you can shift. I just close this door so I turn it on and the alarm won't ding. So it's got start stop here. Just put on the display here quickly. And as you can see, so it's got an LED uh, digital DAC, a digital display type of format. You can change some of the views on this right now. It's set at A, which is the, uh, the mode for utilizing the battery. Um, N is the automatic mode for balancing and then D is that dining dynamic mode which will engage stiffen the suspension engage the engine all the time and give you more uh, output and all that kind of stuff so i mean a pretty basic um, display system gives you all the relevant information which is nice uh, wheels controls for your adas stuff 
um, and uh, your lane keeping, cru adaptive cruise, your tel telephone, your music controls, your paging for some of the menu systems. Got, as I mentioned, these paddles. There is no way to change the regen power on this. It's just set at standard. It's set at a very light regen on this mode. You've got your stocks or turn signals and wipers up here at the back. So everything's pretty well laid out nice nice and neatly. Um, okay, pretty good uh, rear mirror. You have your controls for lights and then you have a nice moonroof here as well or panoramic roof. One thing I do like is the combination of digital and again, uh, manual controls, especially on the HVAC. These are really nice to have handy to go up and down for your temps, activating the fan speeds and whatnot and changing the, the airflow. These are really easy to use and I, I do like that. A couple of USB ports and A and a C here. This is your phone charging port, which is nice because it doesn't actually slide around. It stays in there, works well. You can put a couple of things down the sides, that kind of stuff. You have a nice uh, leather wrap shifter here for changing gears, your e-safe settings if you want to conserve some battery power, parking brake, and then you've got this little uh, volume knob and mute button as well on and off. So if you wanted to just mute it and you couldn't remember where it was, you have this couple of small cup holders, a little awkward to get to when you're driving. I will have to admit that. So that's a little bit of a quirk. It's got the center arm, which which it is nice. It does slide forward and back, as you can see, to some degree. So you can rest your elbow and then it's got a small containment part to it. Not really much to look at. And then you've got a pretty decent size um, actually quite a large glove box for this kind of vehicle and nice workmanship um, ambient lighting and so forth so uh, you know a pleasant front to be in uh, as far as controls those really not a whole lot going on from an ev perspective uh, e-hybrid is kind of the one that i kind of trip to or trips um, and then trips is where you can uh, we can see your consumption and i will again show you everything when i'm done uh, i'll give you a quick uh, reading on that but Nice, pleasant interior. It's uh, well appointed, uh, very well built, no squeaks, rattles, and uh, they've done a good job. All right, so this is, is not going to be a huge back seat because this is a compact SUV, as I mentioned. Uh, door opens traditional, pretty good entry room here. It's creeping at me because I left the key in there, so it's reminding me, you're a dummy, you need to get the key. Let's get in here. All right, not too bad. Sorry for the noise, uh, but okay. I mean, I've got the seat where I have it and um, it seems to be enough space here and uh, enough space here again um, for two people this is going to be nice got an armrest for three in a pinch as i usually say it's definitely well appointed and comfortable um, the, the seats tend to be a little hard in here but i think this is a, such a brand new car hasn't really been worn down yet but they are bolstered quite well you know it's a decent environment to be in just some quick driving thoughts here in the alfa romeo Tonali, so it's an okay car. You know, right now I'm in battery only mode. It's nice and comfortable. Um, once the battery depletes, it will shift it to a hybrid mode where the engine kicks in. You can hear the engine. The shift points kind of really go up and down from a rev perspective. So it can it can sound a little bit sewing machine-ish like if that makes any sense, but it does get you going. It does have a fun factor to it. I'm just kind of not really into the engine noises anymore. So it doesn't really do anything for me. As far as the stability of the car, the handling, it turns really nice. That electric, this, uh, that wire, steer by wire actually works really good it doesn't give you a ton of steering feel but it really does respond quite well um, to this and uh, you know I do find that it does have a lane keeping mode and it's on low it, there's no way to turn that off so it will kind of nudge you around the lanes there's no way to disengage that so sometimes you feel like it's a little loose because it's trying to uh, to put you into a lane it's got that little spot there if that makes any sense instrumentation shows everything the e-connect system here which is the 10 and a quarter inch display compounded with the 12.5 inch are nicely set up so you get all the information you need again as i mentioned with the physical controls for the hvac everything's comfortable the sliding armrests it's okay the cup rests are a little hard to get to as i mentioned but otherwise driving it's a fun vehicle to drive the brakes are fine they work really well i do find it every morning when i get up after this thing's parked outside and go the brakes are squealing uh, for the first minute or so <laughs> until I guess I get that surface layer of rust off and then it's okay. Um, but that's just typical, I, I think, just for, for all disc brakes that are out there. So what can I say? It runs well. If, you know, once the engine kicks in, you are going to feel a little bit of that, that a lot of changes in the shifts there uh, in the transmission. That's one thing that's noticeable. But for everyday driving, they do, they've done a great job. So just here driving the Alpha and uh, we've got some snow today, which is uh, typical for this time in March where we get up and down weather. And so I've got it in the all electric mode because I charged the battery last night, but you can hear the engine coming on a little bit. And you can see in this diagram that the engine was on, which 
just to get going. So what happens is, is uh, that I'm understanding is when the weather's a little off, the roads are a little slick, the engine will kick on even if you put it into, you know, like use the battery mode first before using the gas, which is what the A represents. Um, it's our version of, of some sort of, of efficiency. And, um, but obviously the car needs to maintain traction and control. So in slick conditions, like we're seeing this morning, uh, where it's cool, we've had the snow overnight, uh, it's a little slick. I, I just This is just running all season tires, so they're okay, but certainly they're not winter tires, so you're not gonna get that traction that you would, that extra traction you would with winter tires. So the car automatically detects that, hey, I need a little bit more um, front momentum, front power to get this thing going in this a uh, little bit slicker traction, so it engages the engine. So I'm gonna stop. Uh, so now I'm going again in a sec. And I'm just going right nice and easy. I'm not giving it, but you can see that the motor is kicked in with the red indicator. The green is the battery, and then where the power is being delivered, both to the rear and to the front. Um, and that, and now the engine kicks off. So just to get up the speed in the slick, um, it puts the engine on. The engine helps drive the forward axle or the front wheels, the front axle, and the battery um, push uh, supplies power to the motor, which is on the rear axle. So when this is in battery only mode it's in rear wheel drive when the engine kicks on it's in all wheel drive or what they call e all wheel drive or electronic all wheel drive because it switches back and forth on this um, i believe there's a limited there's a limited slip differential option on this vehicle that you can lock that but i, I haven't played with it um, and i'm I don't need to really because we're not we're not you know having that bad weather but just kind of wanted to highlight the fact that the the alpha does a pretty good job of maintaining the use of the battery when you put it when when the battery is charged enough so that you can do as much distance in the battery as you can on a daily basis uh, but i did notice this um this not issue because it's part of the engineering and it's part of the handling and drivetrain i get it but i, I did notice this function that the car will, you know, in order to maintain tr good traction control, um, be able to switch the, the motor on and off, drive, put power to the front when needed um, to supply that extra traction um, and mobility to get going. So um, it's interesting how that's engineered. I haven't run across that before. So we'll, um, you know, just interest another thing to see here um, in this technology that is um, all wheel drive. All right, so just wanted to show you my driving summary for efficiencies. As you can see here, I've driven almost 218 kilometers in a few days. Uh, as you can see, the vast majority of that, 184 kilometers, was in all electric or using the battery, and the 34 almost kilometers, 33.5, were in gas. So it gave me a gas rating of 2.3 liters per 100 kilometers based on that trip. I don't have a battery efficiency. This one doesn't provide that. But as you can see, if you charge it every night and do your daily driving, most of your driving will be all electric. And that's going to result in fuel savings, depending on your mileage, but easily $1,500 to $2,500 a year in fuel savings. Well, I hope you enjoyed all the looks uh, about an overview about this vehicle. Um, you know, in closing, uh, Tonalis, it's a fun vehicle. You know, it's different. It's, you can definitely tell that Alfa Romeo heritage in this thing and the looks and the design and the fun factor. Um, to me, it's, it's relying hev more heavily on the 1.3 turbo engine to get around in that fun factor than it is on the electric powertrain. So that would be my only probably negative on this. I do find that, as I mentioned, the driving, you know, the transmission does shift a lot when you're in that mode. Uh, if it loses some traction, it automatically kicks in the engine, again, for safety to, to engage the four-wheel drive system and all that kind of stuff. So definitely a fun car. It's got some quirks to it uh, a little bit. I think in the Canadian winter, sometimes it trips off the sensors when it's a little cold. The, the A, uh, you know, front collision sensor and another sensor, you get warnings for a bit, then they go away as the car warms up. So little things like this, you know, that may <laughs> make it, uh, I found that, uh, in the snowstorm and afterwards, even with spraying the windshield, the windshield, windshield wash fluid, sometimes it didn't completely clean the windshield off. There were little streaks here and there. A small little nitpicking, I know, on this vehicle, but it is a very fun vehicle, a very pleasant vehicle to be in. 
And you know, from a Canadian price point perspective, it's priced aggressively when you look at this range of, of compact SUV vehicles, especially from an Italian manufacturer, Italian maker, and these are made in Italy and shipped over. So starting price for the PHEV version is 54,995 Canadian. And that's why it qualifies for the $5,000 federal rebate. Now, when you load these things up, you can, you can and I'll tell you what the price is on this one. Uh, the 54.99 is for the Sprint trim package. Uh, the Veloce, as you see here, is the 57,000. 495 and this one that as I mentioned loaded up if I just find the right price here is $73,030 including destination charge including $2,000 for the Verdi uh, uh, fan glow metallic paint and a whole bunch of other options in leather treatments and appointments active assist and so forth so Typical with a lot of European cars, you can certainly drive the price up on these by adding a few more SKUs in that uh, build out to drive the price up in, in this case at $73,000 before your taxes. Now you still get your incentive on that, right? So you, know, you will get some savings. But again, Alfa Romeo is an upscale brand, is a unique brand, is a niche brand that has an extremely loyal following that love the brand. And I think they've done quite well to get a nice package in this vehicle, which looks really nice. It's got some really neat, quirky looks to it and design angles. It's got a fun factor from driving. It's easy to maneuver, easy to park, easy to get around because of that more compact nature of this vehicle. Yet you sit high and you have some decent ground clearance. So I do like that. And I do applaud uh, Alfa Romeo for putting in a decent size electrical powertrain element into this or electric powertrain element into this to give you 45, 50, 55. I'm sure in warmer weather, this will probably push 50 kilometers of all electric range quite easily. So I applaud them for doing that and for making it simple. Um, and, uh, what I, you know, again, some of my negatives are just on, on how that, that engine can kick in a little early. If you need to power, it kicks in pretty quick and it, sometimes it just stays on for a while, even if you have battery juice. Sometimes I felt myself having to switch it back to the, uh, to the A mode to get more uh, just to kind of force it back onto battery mode after maybe it kicks in. But, you know, I'm still kind of learning the vehicle in only a short few days of having this. Is it a recommended product? Hey, absolutely. I think somebody that doesn't want to make the plunge to full electric vehicle, loves the brand and wants to stay with the brand and wants something that's fun and still gives you some economical benefits, then the Tonali, in this case the Veloce, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle is the way to go and from a car all right and that's it for this edition of the ev revolution show my review of the 2024 alfa romeo tonali veloce now i need to go get some pasta for lunch i'm getting hungry now I want to again thank stellantis canada for allowing me the use of this press vehicle for a few days always appreciated and again very excited to see what comes next from Alfa Romeo when it comes to electrification. Thanks very much again for watching the show. All my contact information is coming up at the end. However, if you want to email me, if you have questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. You can comment on the YouTube channel, of course, or email me at evrevolutionshow at gmail.com. I had to think about that. I'm on Twitter as well, so please follow me on Twitter. At evrevshow is my Twitter handle. That's the only social media that I have. I don't have anything else. So if you're looking for me on other things, it's not me or it's not the show. Um, so again, thanks very much for tuning in. Everybody stay safe and keep watching. Keep looking at that electric vehicle landscape because it grows and grows like wildfire. If people are telling you that the EV market is tanking. They are wrong. Tell them to call me and I'll set them straight. So until the next time, everybody stay safe and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.